So now I want to talk a little bit about drag forces here. So um, again, most of the Newton dynamics from AP Physics 1 is identical, but drag forces is probably the only thing that you really talk about. So drag forces that we're always going to imagine, this is like air resistance or you're going through water, is that the drag force is a force that is you know, usually proportional to the velocity and it opposes motion, similar to friction. Okay, where B is a constant and V is the velocity. Okay, so this is what the drag force. So imagine a, a, a ball is falling, right? It has it feels a force of gravity on it, but it will also feel a drag force. Okay, now it doesn't have to be this form. This is the most common form, but what's what's what it is is it will relate. Usually, the drag force that you'll be given in a problem is related to the velocity in some way. Okay, so let's just use this kind of example in this case. So if I were to look at this guy, I would say like, let's say this ball is falling. So this is a falling ball. And let's say down is the positive direction. I would say uh, the net force equals MA, and I want to understand its acceleration. So the net force would be uh, MG minus BV, because the, the FG is MG downward. That's in the positive direction. The drag force is BV in the upward direction, which is the negative direction. And that equals m times a. Now, this ends up being what we call a differential equation. Why? Because acceleration I can write as m dv dt. So this is, well, um, if, you, if you look at this setup, what this is is a differential equation involving v. Because everything else is a constant. m is a constant, assuming the object isn't changing its mass over time. g is a constant, assuming it's near the surface of the Earth. B is a constant that was kind of given. And so like the only variable is V and you're trying to figure out what a V relates to it. Now in AP, depending on where you are in calculus AB, we set up to solve this differential equation because this is a separable differential equation. What we do is we move the DT up. That's always the first step in a separable differential equation. And you want to only multiply or divide so that the V is on one side and the T is on the other side. So I'm going to divide this onto the other side get dt is m dv over mg minus bv, like that. Now, these you just got to remember m and g are constants. Like if I gave you numbers, those would just be numbers we put in there. And same with b, and then v is the only variable. And then you integrate both sides. Okay? So this, this here, I'm going to get t. And this side, I got to do a u substitution. If u is mg minus bv, then d use the derivative of this. Remember, mg is a constant, so the derivative of v is just dv, negative b dv, or in other words, the d, uh, negative 1 over b du is equal to dv. And that's what we do when we do this uh, substitution, is this is negative 1 over b du. This down here is u, and then we just have a left on the net m. So the right side becomes the integral of m times negative 1 over b du, over u and you can pull this part out negative m over b integral du over u negative m over b natural log absolute value of u which is negative m over b natural log absolute value of mg minus bv oh there should have been a plus c sorry should have been a plus c here i lose points your calculus teacher will get mad if you leave out that plus c Okay, and so then you could theoretically try to solve for this. I'm going to multiply by b negative b over m on both sides to get rid of that thing in front. Now, I'm assuming that in a physical sense, I can get rid of these absolute values because I'm going to assume that mg is always bigger than bv. Okay, that's not necessarily true. It depends on whether what the initial velocity is, but we'll just assume that kind of for now just to make our lives a little bit easier. Then I, in order to get rid of the natural log, I do e to the both sides, right? So the left side becomes that, and the right side, the e, this becomes e to the ln, mg minus bv. And then instead of plus c, we make it e to the c like that. The e to the c, we collapse into another constant, and the e and the ln cancel, so you just get e to the mg, c times mg minus bv is equal to e to the negative b over mt. Okay, and then you could uh, divide by c or just bring the c to the other side, right? Dividing by c, it's an arbitrary constant, so you just kind of leave it like that. You're just gonna divide it, move it to the other side. And then I'll divide by, oh no, I'll, I'll, um, I will subtract mg 
from both sides to get rid of this guy and then divide by negative b. So then I get v over this side, negative mg over, ne over ne negative b is just mg over b. And then this just becomes some other constant, uh, e to the negative b over mt. Okay, So that is the general form. It doesn't have to be so complicated. You usually get numbers and stuff like that. But that's the general way to set up. If it's not v, if it's v squared or something different like that, then you have to do the same idea. But you got to rely on your separation of variables techniques from your calculus class to solve that differential equation. Now, a couple of things I want you to note about this expression is that um, what let's just think about first intuitively what happens is what happens is when you first fall, draw uh, an object, you let it go and it falls and it feels a drag force. Uh, at first, the drag force is very low, right? So what happens is it just feels like a a mg. But then as it speeds up, as it goes down faster and faster, this force increases. And eventually, these forces can balance one another if you get, if you get uh, at a certain speed. We call that terminal velocity. So terminal velocity occurs when the net force equals zero. When the net force is zero, the acceleration is zero. So there's no change in the velocity. It's sort of the maximum speed. It occurs when BV equals mg or V is equal to mg over B, right? That's the terminal velocity in this scenario. Again, if you get a slightly different expression for the drag force, you might solve a little bit differently, but that's the, the basic idea is that most importantly, think about when terminal velocity is when the net force is zero, so the acceleration is zero, so it's no longer changing its uh, velocity. Terminal is kind of like the final. It's the final velocity. It's not going to change anymore after that because the forces, the net force has now gone to zero. And that happens if you uh, if you skydive and if you jump out of a... Um, and, and you kind of you know flatten yourself out and you're falling out of airplane, you'll reach a maximum velocity. You won't go any faster. And that's because the air is pushing you up at the same at the same magnitude that the gravity is pulling you down. Now notice our analytical expression. What happens when I look as t goes to infinity of this expression? Well, this guy is going to go to zero, assuming b and m are positive values, which I, which I kind of said. Um, then this is e to the negative infinity. doesn't matter what c is, e to the negative infinity is going to go to zero. right? That's exponential functions. So then this becomes mg over b, which is the same thing as we got as our terminal velocity. So the analytical expression we got for velocity kind of gives us the same result, is that if you go long enough, eventually it will approach mg over b velocity for that expression. But the key concept to really think about is terminal velocities when the net force is zero and we use we solve the differential equation of f equals ma in order to figure out what velocity is. So let's let's look at some example problems when we're dealing with these drag forces. So we have an object with mass 10 kilograms is dropped from a great height subject to this drag force uh, f drag equals 10v, where v is the velocity of the object. What is the terminal velocity of the object? Now remember, that's the velocity. That's that's that's. If we look at the free body diagram, right? We have mg going down, and we have 10v going up, right? That's the force. And when we're going to have terminal velocity is when the acceleration is zero. The velocity is no longer changing anymore, and that means the net force would have to equal zero then. Because the net force equals ma, and that would occur when mg is equal to 10v, or v is equal to mg over 10. And let's say that's 10 is the mass, g is 9.8, or you could use 10 divided by 10, but that's 9.8 meters per second. Okay. Now, assuming the initial velocity is zero, set up and solve a differential equation to find the function v of t as a function of time. So if I'm just looking at this, I know that, let's say it's accelerating downward, right? Down is the positive direction. We're going to apply net force equals ma, right? So if the, if the positive direction is downward, we say mg minus 10v is equal to ma. And so let's just do, this is um, 10 times 9.8 minus 10 V is equal to 10 and the acceleration is DV DT, right? That's the differential equation here. Now it turns out we can divide the 10 out on both sides to make it a little bit easier. So we get 9.8 minus V is equal to DV DT. And then we apply separation of variables to solve this differential equation. So we bring the DT up and bring that down. So we say DT is DV over 9.8 minus v. So this is our differential equation, by the way, or actually, you know, technically, this one was our differential equation. Um, this we're going to use integration to do 
um, you know, by, by that. So that's going to be t plus c. And then this guy is negative natural log of 9.8 minus v. Now, I don't need an absolute value because I know that it started at um, initial velocity of zero. So I know 9.8 minus v is already a positive quantity. Although in math, we normally say absolute value. And the minus sign pops out because if I take uh, the derivative of this by chain rule, I'd multiply by negative 1. All right, so then we're going to multiply through by negative 1, negative t plus c. Again, when you multiply arbitrary constant by negative 1, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter. We'll do e to the both sides to get rid of the natural log. And then I can split this guy apart into that, and then e to the natural log cancels out. e to the c, we just call that a different constant c. So we have c e to the minus t is equal to 9.8 minus v, or v is equal to 9.8 minus c e to the minus t. And we wouldn't know that at time t equals 0, we need v is equal to uh, 0, because we say that initially the velocity is 0. So time 0, the velocity is 0. So that means v is equal to 9.8 minus c e to the 0 equals 0. So 9.8 minus c is equal to 0, or c is equal to 9.8. And therefore, our ultimate equation is v equals 9.8 my oops. 9.8 minus 9.8 e to the negative t. Okay, and that's it. That's our solution there. Um.